Hello and welcome back to Apothecary Ready. Already. Um, so today we're going to do our next installment of Tactics Tuesday. And for this one, we're going to do something slightly different. Um, it's a, this is a thing that I've been kind of working on the past few months. And I, it's kind of a method that um, I like to use for kind of progressing in the game. Um, so I call it the, the score sheet process. Um, so the, please don't mind the, the clickbaity title. Um, how to win it's, it's not necessarily going to guarantee you a victory every time but it's a process that um in short will help you score more points in your games progressively and then hopefully with that upward trajectory you'll start to win more and that's the thinking behind it there's probably loads of competitive coaching courses which offer the same if not similar uh, type of things so this is when i kind of made up on my own and um, it's kind of just a logical approach to to scoring and winning games so the philosophy behind the, the score sheet process is very simple. It's a, it's a triangle with plan, execute, reflect. So we do a lot of planning with list building. Um, you know, that, that's something everyone does. You plan to how you want your combos to work, how you want your, your game to go. Um, and then you go and you play. And then, you know, you get caught up in the, in the heat of the moment. Your, your plan kind of goes out of the window a bit because your opponent does something you were expecting. Um, and you're not necessarily got something written down where you, you can quickly refer to and remind yourself of the plan um, and then the third part the reflect is really key so after your games you really need to to if you want to improve that is if you're just playing for fun this is you know this is totally different the kind of different kind of attitude but if you're trying to score more points and win more games you need to, the reflection is really key you need to look back upon your game and and go okay where did it go wrong where could i score more points what, you know where did i mess up and um, so that's what this process is about plan execute reflect so plan. Um, so obviously th this ties into the list, which is why the Tactics Tuesdays in the previous episodes, I've gone through my list and how I want it to run. Uh, but this time I'm going to take it to the next level where I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to be showing you what points I expect to score in each step, in each turn. This is how many points I want to score. This is how I'm going to do it. These are the units that I'm going to do it with. So that's the plan bit. Uh, and then for, so so we're going to create a table in the with a plan, um, which you can take to a game with you with your expectations. So this is setting out, this is what I want to do, this is what the points I want to score in each turn. And then you take that to your game just to remind you of what you want to be doing in each turn. Obviously, no, there's the adage that no plan in, in what's the, what is it? No plan survives contact with the enough. enemy. I totally understand that. But with that, if, if you don't have the plan somewhere that you can refer to, when you do get a moment in a, you know, in a game to go, oh, what should I be doing right now? Or if you'll have something to go back to, you might not score the points that you, you've expected to, but that's going to be part of the whole process. So we make this table, we write down how many points we've got, or we want to get, sorry, how many we expect to get in each turn with a rough plan, a very simple you know, piece of paper that you can take with you. Um, and then, yeah, so we take it to the game, refer to it in the game. So then you execute the game, you refer to this, um, to this plan as you go, and hopefully it'll, it'll prompt you to do things so you don't go, oh, I forgot to do R&D over in that quarter, or I forgot to psychic interrogate, something like that. There are examples that I've done repeatedly. So this is why I kind of developed this thing. And I'm not saying that I am the most competitive person in the world because I'm not. I'm nowhere near any you know, kind of ITC ranking, you know, top 10. I'm not even close. Top 10,000 maybe if I'm lucky. But yeah, so this is just to help people, not necessarily new players, if you're brand new to, say, Gene Steeler Cult, this isn't a thing to do straight away. This is, to, once you've done a few games, to, to do it then. Uh, so my advice would be for anyone new to the cult is work out a few cool combos, try and try and kill, just try and kill stuff, really. You know, work out your, your cool damaging combos, you know, your, your rock drills with your Primus, your re-rolling ones, etc. things like that. Go and figure those things out. Figure out how the army functions on the table. And then once you've done that bit, once you kind of got a, you're familiar with how your army works, then look at this this score sheet process. So then, um, so whilst you're executing your game, it's gonna be really important to write down the points and keeping a record of that and taking it home with you. The amount of times I've I've done that and kind of we've just wrote it on a on a whiteboard board and then it gets wiped off at the end and you, you've got no record. So. This process, you need that data. You need th those those numbers that you um, you got in in the game. You need to keep a record of that. Really important because the last part is the reflection. So the reflection is you're going to look 
at your two tables, you're going to have one that says expectation and some numbers, and you're going to have one that says, you know, which is the actual game and some numbers. So, and this is where the reflection comes in. You've got to look at those 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 two different numbers and see how um, you can reflect on what went wrong and what went right as well. You know, you might go, oh, boom, I, I scored every single point of, you know, your brood swarm or R&D that I wanted to do. That's right. That's a strength. You know, that's that's good. But then conversely, you've got to look at where it went wrong. You know, did you overextend yourself on the primary? You know, did, did you just forget to do psychic interrogation or, or whatever it is? Or, you know, make sure you, you, your models were in the right position for engaging all fronts. And then you've got to look, look at that and go, OK, these are the points that I need to remember to do next time. So then next time you make a new plan and you make sure that these things, places where you went wrong previously are in your new plan. This stuff isn't complex. It's 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 just it's just a, a process to a formal process to get you thinking about it. This is common sense stuff. It's nothing complicated. It's not you know so, you know you need a degree to to know this stuff. This is you'll do all your time all the time in your in your normal life and in games. You know I'll be preaching to the converted on this. You know this is this is something that I use. That I just want to put out there to help particularly newer players to get to grips and score more points. And maybe you're a more casual player. You're not really thought about about you know being competitive before, and you want to be more competitive now. You know this hopefully will, is a tool that you can use to to score more points. So yeah, let's get into it. So step one. So we're starting off at the planning stage. So in this part, I'm going to go through my list to start with, and then I'm going to look at the the points I can score with this list. Okay. So just to start off then. Um, so it's very similar to lists I've used pre previously. I've made a few changes here and there, um, but the, the kind of the feel of the list is similar to other ones. So you can check out my other videos if you want to see how my list has developed to this point. Um, so, and also I, I'm planning for the Nephilim mission pack. So um, CP is light. Um, we know that. Um, so it's, it's, I've not taken all the bells and whistles that I could have, but I've taken the, the key ones I think I need. So anyway, cult creed, right? So I've taken a myriad cults um, a battalion detachment, just the one detachment. Um, my myriad cult is impassioned, and I'm going to try out war convoy this time. So impassioned gives you plus one to hit when you charge, are charged, or heroically intervene, which I find is it just makes your all your combat super efficient. So all those drills are hitting on twos and then auto wounding. So you get loads of those through. I have used a primus in the past with the reroll ones as well but uh, I'm not taking him today. Um, so yeah, Impassioned and War Convoy. So War Convoy gives you a six up feeling of pain on all your vehicles and your bikers. Um, so I'm just hoping that that will give my vehicles, I've, I've got six vehicles and a unit of bikers in this list. And um, so I'm hoping that that will, um, that will give them just a, a bit more survivability and um, just to, you know, maybe just hold on for one or two more turns, which is, is really, really key to scoring primary, I think. So uh, anyway, so pre-game stratagems, I've, I've taken the Relic CP strat, and then I've done the, the Grand Sire's Gifts twice to get the extra two Relics. So I'm taking three Relics. I'm not taking any wall or traits whatsoever. Um, so HQ, I've got my Patriarch. And I've given him Mass Hypnosis and Psychic Stimulus, and that's it. And then I've got uh, a Jackal Alphas, with bare bones, as is. And then a Magus, and the Magus has got Might From Beyond and Psychic Stimulus. He's also got a Psychic Familiar to give me that one reroll per game. Um, and then I've got the Relic on him for, with uh, the Unwilling Orb, which I found is priceless in all my games. He seems to come in really handy. Uh, you know, you're getting plus one to cast your, I think it's Malediction and uh, Witchfires. Um, I've not taken any Maledictions with my Magus, um, but the, the best part of this relic is the denying anywhere on the board. The amount of times this has messed people up, um, particularly like, like Grey Knights and their psychic actions and things like that, um, and even mental interrogations for their psychic interrogation secondary, really messes people up, can really deny points from anywhere on the board, and your Magus is going to be sat at the back on your home objective anyway, or somewhere somewhere like that, somewhere safe out of the way. Um, so being able to d still play a part in the game whilst being you know, right at the back of the board is really handy, really makes him a nice, efficient choice. And also with the strat uh, Gestalt Consciousness, he can also cast anywhere on the board as well. So that means he can, ca can cast and deny from anywhere on the board and just be hiding away. So brilliant. And I have previously taken that on my Patriarch, but 
Um, I think I went through it on my um, the tournament review I did last week. Um, I found that my pay track was out in amongst the, you know, on the board doing stuff. Um, so him being able to deny anywhere didn't actually help. It did help him get off his um, his witchfire and his malediction powers, but I felt it, it didn't come in that clutch as far as I can remember. Um, so I'm going to try it, the unwilling orb on the Magus. So that's my, my free HQs out of the way. Right, on to troops. So I've made a, a, little ch a couple of changes here. So I'm taking a battalion now rather than a brigade like I was previously. So I'm down to six slots. Um, so what I've done is I've taken three slots, uh, three units of 10 acolytes. And now on this, I've given them all drills. I did have one with cutters, but I've just found the drills just can hurt anything. And they just, they just do a lot more damage, generally speaking. And um, things like getting the mortal wounds past involves things like that. You know, it's they've they've done a lot more for me in my games. So three into ten with drills. One of them has got our time is nigh, which gives the, the proficient planning upgrade, which gives them an extra attack on the first time they fight. Another one's got a trap sprung, which gives them the three d six drop lowest charge when they drop out of of deep strike or from the underground, as it is in Gene Stealers. And then I've got two units of five acolytes, both with one saw. So previously I'd taken three units of five um, with a saw each, but I've because I've, I, need, I need the slots now. Uh, I don't have the, the the 12 slots available to me anymore. So I've dropped a five-man unit of Acolytes. And then in my final slot, I've taken 10 near fights, just bare bones. Um, okay, so then uh, my fast attack. So previously I'd taken um, three units of one Achilles Ridge Runners with flare launchers and mining lasers, which was very really good for screening. Um, but I found that it really hampered my shooting capability um so I've I've taken a unit of three and I'm gonna combo that with the Jackal Alphas. I'm trying him out, I'm not sure how good he's gonna be. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Cause so his ability is to make a unit a unit visible within 36 inches count as exposed for a unit. So I think part of the reason why um my ridge runners weren't very effective is because I couldn't I find it hard to get the things I wanted exposed, I couldn't always achieve it. And um, so that plus one to wound is really gonna come in clutch. And I'm going to go back to the uh, missile launchers as well, rather than the mining lasers uh, for this game to try that out because the, the, the missile launchers are strength five or six, I think it is. So a lot of stuff, a lot of toughness stuff, they'll be wounding on fives. So if the, the with the Jekyll Alpha, so you can bring that down to fours and um, hopefully it can make it a bit more, um, do a bit more consistent damage. Also, the Jekyll Alpha has a damage to sniper, so they can move, they can shoot, get makes something cross fired. And then it makes them exposed with its ability, um, and then the uh, ridge runners can then shoot and you know shooting at something that is crossfired and exposed. So I'm going to try that out today. Um, and then in my other fast attack slot, I've got a unit of Atlan jackals, just the four of them, no quads, uh, and then one demo charge just for you know. I, I thought they'd come in useful. They might be they might be able to do you know a um, they could do an R and D or an ancient all fronts or be, be where they need to be for brood swarm, something like that. And then the demo charge, I just had some points left over at the end. Um, it, you know, they could throw it and do a bit of damage to something. It makes them a little bit of a threat. You know, they could pick on you know a character that they they caught out in the open. Um, they can generally just be a nuisance, really. Um, so I'm taking them today. I've not played them in a few games. We'll see how they get on. And um, this this I may revert back to my other list. Um, after this, but we'll see how we go. Um, okay, then onto my elites. So I've got two units of five hybrid metamorphs, um, all with hand flamers. One of them's got lying in wait, so it can drop in three inches away. Um, the other one has the from every angle proficient planning. So this is you can instead of putting them in underground, you can put them into strategic reserves for free, and then they can come in one turn earlier. So. So yeah, they they can they can either go underground or strategic reserves. I can decide on the day. So that's that's nice. Gives me a bit of flexibility uh, for dropping in. Then onto the Kalamorph. So Kalamorph, I've given him the Worm Tooth Rounds Relic. I find it's really handy. I like to drop him in. Um, he's he's good at doing some damage. Usually can pick out a, a weaker character. That's key. Um, he's he's been up and down. He's not been as consistent as I would like. Um, you need to remember with him when he's dropping in with worm, worm tooth rounds. That's a heavy slot. Uh, a, yeah, it's a heavy ammo um, shot. So 
you, you ideally need to shoot at something that's got a crossfire marker if you can. So he's back to hitting on twos to get the most out of him. That's something that I've learned. And also trying to get someone exposed, it's always always good. Uh, then onto the Nexos. So he's got the the relic cranial inlay um, with Nephilim. Obviously, TP is tight, so having been able to regen on a five up when you use a strat is is helpful. In some games, it's been great. I've, I've regained you know quite a few CP. In other games, he's let me down, and I've just just lost the cost of his relic. But you know, on a, you, you're going to use maybe ten stratagems, say in a game. You know, you should get a third of them back, so you, you should be getting free CP back. So on paper, it's a good choice. In reality, it can let you down. Just be aware of that, that you might just not roll the fives and sixes when you need them. Um, then on to an ever-present uh, unit in my list is my 10 uh, Pure Strange Gene Stealers, if they came from below. So that is the, the kind of the scout move when they're revealed from the ambush marker. It's really important to remember this is when it's not a pre-game move, it's when they're revealed from ambush. So this can be in your turn or your opponent's turn. Um, so you, as soon as you, your opponents finish their movement and then you deploy if you go second. Um, you, so you're doing it in their turn and then you're making a scout move then. This unit is a, a real utility piece. I'm not actually expecting to do a lot of damage um, in terms of taking out you know, their points worth. What I'm hoping to do is to take out a bit of chaff, you know, a bit of a vulnerable target. They're getting you know, four, four attacks each, so that's 40 attacks. 50 if you give them back from beyond, which I usually do. And you can usually wipe out, say, a squad of intercessors or or some some you know something that's going to be used to hold an objective or to do an action. That is why they're there. They're they're to deny your opponent points. They're not they're to deny your opponent victory points, not to to make up their weight in points, as in points cost for units. So that's why they're there. That's their purpose. That's their role. And then just to round it all off, in heavy support, I've got three life rock grinders we all have seismic cannons and demolition charges so these um these are going to have my my two units of five acolytes in so they're going to be used in terms of the primary game so what i'm hoping to do is put them on the, the midboard objectives one or two depending on how how you know which mission you're playing uh, if it's a five uh, objective mission or a six objective mission um yeah so they're going to go on objective if they get pops you're going to jump out with your squad of objective secured guys which are then going to hopefully hide away and keep that objective and um, i'm hoping that with their minus one to damage and the war convoy for the six up feel no pain i'm hoping that they'll be just tough enough i'm not expecting a great deal out of them but if i just want to just be enough to just survive and get me the primary points and the one that's empty is probably going to be shot up the board i might um you know move it 12 advance it the six of a cp if i feel if I feel the charge is going to be long, um, psychic stealers on it, and then charge it in first turn, along with the, the gene stealers, just to give them something to really have to chew on in the first turn. That's my thinking on that. So that rounds out the list. It's 1998 points, so two points to spare. Um, I, think, I can think of spending it on, uh, and I get free CP at the start of the game. So that's the list. So now we're going to go into my expectations for point scoring. Right, so how are we going to we, how are we expecting planning to score points in this game? Okay, so I've got a table on the left on the left column. It turns one one to five, and then I've got my primary, my tertiary, and then three secondaries that I'm taking um, or planning to take. Um, so the, ter the tertiary is the second part of the primary. The best way to call it is the tertiary. Um, so that I've I've actually found is is going to be really key. To scoring points with GSC. GSC are not an army that's going to dominate the board for a long period of time. We are going to have it be a flash in the pan. We're going to do some damage, and then we're just going to melt away. But doing these 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 tertiary actions or, or whatever that is, you're going to get points. You know, you can there's ten points usually available, maybe even more with some some missions, um, and they're really key to maximizing your primary score because there's no way you're going to score 12, 12, 12 on any mission as Gene Steeler Cult, unless your opponent isn't playing. You know, any anyone with any nous is gonna is gonna attack you on these objectives and you're gonna lose objectives. So the general game plan is to hold two every turn. Hold two, challenge for a third or a fourth if you know 
it's going to come to a, a point where you need to hold your hold at least two objectives, score your eight points per turn, and then you're going to have to try and deny your points after, deny your opponent points after that. So in my primary column, I've got zero in the in the in the first in turn one because you can't score your primary in turn one, and then turns two, three, four, and five. I'm saying I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold two or three, depending on the mission, and score eight points each turn. That's all I'm expecting. Um, and then in the tertiary column, I'm going to do this action each turn. So I'm going to get two in each. I've said two because, the, it, like I said before, it can change depending on the mission, but usually there's two available. So I'm saying, okay, I'm just going, to, I'm going to score two tertiary points each turn, and that's going to give me 10 points at the end of the game. Now, in terms of primary, you cap to 45. The four eights give you 36. The five twos give you 10. Added together, that's 46. Obviously, capped at 45. So you can max out your primary with this expectation. I don't think it's unreasonable. I think if anyway you're going to lose it, it's going to be later on in the game. You're going to run out of units. But w that's just a, that's something a bridge will have to cross later. Um, so we'll see how we get on with that. So my secondaries. Now, three secondaries I like to take. Uh, Brood Swarm, which is the GSC um, specific I think, battlefield supremacy, specific one. It's got a recent buff in the new Nephilim pack, uh, which is which has uh, really made this this a real almost an auto take. I, I think it's it plays really well into the Gene Stealer cult. It's a really nice secondary. Um, my second one is psychic interrogation. I've got two psychers. I'm hoping you know your your opponent's going to have a few characters. You know they'll at least have one. I guess you know there's, there's no way you're not going to have one. Um, and yeah. I'm going to try and score that. And my third one is Retrieve Nephilim Data, R&D. Um, this is one, I think, plays into the strengths of the Gene Stealer Cult. Unfortunately, you are capped at 12 on this, and that's the only real downside to this one. So anyway, let's get into Brood Swarm. So in this one, you score um, up to five points. You get one point for having more unit, more models in your own deployment zone than your opponent. You get another point for scoring... Uh, for having more models in No Man's Land than your opponent. And then there's a third one for having more models in your opponent's deployment zone than they do. And then the fourth one is having more models on the board altogether than your opponent. And then the fifth point is if you score all four of those points, you get a fifth bonus point, which means you can score, you can max this out in three turns, which, again, plays into the strengths of the Gene Circle. You're a flash in the pan, Against some armies, you could score five, five, five in the first three turns, and then that's it. You can't, they've maxed that one out. You don't need to score it anymore. Game uh, opponents like knights or perhaps custodies, you know, those really elite ones, you can outnumber them very easily. So I'm expecting the first turn, I'm going to have more in my own deployment zone because I can screen out to make sure they can't get into my deployment zone. I'm going to have more in no man's land uh, than my opponent by moving stuff out from my opponent's zone into no man's land, um, bringing stuff on if I need to with my um, strategic reserves unit um, because they can come on in turn one. And then on the board, I'm expecting it's most most players, most armies out there, I'm going to have more bodies, more models on the board. I'm going to have, I think I've got something like 80-ish models, maybe 85, something like that. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to outnumber them in those three places at the very least. So yeah, I'm gonna score three points the first turn. Second turn. Now, second turn is when I'm gonna try and hit them in their deployment zone. So in the first turn, I may have already sent in my gene stealers and my rock grinder just to keep them busy, keep them in, in their own deployment zone. And um, in this turn, I'm gonna have my, um, my acolytes dropping in. I'm gonna have my, um, my hybrid metamorphs dropping in to try and get as many models as I can in their deployment zone to try and maximize this secondary. If I don't, all is not lost. There, you know, you can you can play a bit safer and score points later on. Um, then in turn three, they've probably dealt with a lot of my stuff, so that's in their deployment zone. Hopefully, I've done plenty of damage to them in the in, in exchange for that. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to score three again. It's going to be my own deployment zone, no man's land, and on the board, I'm hoping to still have um, enough to score three points. Then in turn four, the same. Three points is what I'm aiming for. Um, hopefully I'll have more in my own deployment zone still, no man's land and the board. And then turn what try turn five, I probably won't have very many models left because that's how it goes to Gene Circle. You just 
you lose a lot of your models. Um, and then say if I'm expected to score at one point, I'm going to have a few things still in my own deployment zone. Hopefully, because I've kept them busy at the other end of the board, they won't have much in my deployment zone, and I can still score my one. And that adds up to 15. So that is maxing out that objective. Then onto a second interrogation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have my patriarch moving up into the middle to well, towards the middle, not necessarily in the exact middle, but he's going to be moving out. So he's within 24 of a character um, wherever they are. I have to move to, to adjust with that. The patriarch is moving eight and he can auto advance six for a CP. So he's quick. He can get to where he needs to be. He can hopefully find some cover to hide behind. Do be careful with him because you can leave him exposed if you're not keeping you know, pay attention to what your opponent's got and where they can move to and you know what their threat range is. Um, but yeah, he's going to go out and he's going to score three points for at least the first three turns, I'm saying. so. Um, but after that, he may have died. Say by turn four, my Patriarch's dead um, because he's been out there and he's been vulnerable. Then my Megs is going to have to step up and score it in the last two turns, which they're capable of doing. So that's Psychic Interrogation. Max out for 15. Brilliant. Then we're on to R&D. Now this one, so this is, you're going to do it in all four quarters. So turn one, I'm probably going to do it on a quarter on my side of the board with my, say, a unit of my acolytes that are sat around waiting for the, for the, for the to, to fight in the middle or in my opponent's deployment zone, depending on how I'm playing it. But probably going to be a unit of acolytes. It could be one that's in a transport if I'm really desperate. But yeah, a unit of 10 probably is going to be um, doing that in my turn. Uh, in turn one, sorry. So turn two, this is where it gets a, a bit more interesting. So I'm going to drop in a unit of my hybrid metamorphs in my opponent's quarter or on, on one of their quarters if, if it's um, kind of a, a different deployment, depending on the deployment map. Um, I'm going to drop them in and I'm going to do R&D. With this unit, I can fail it on a six. I'm going to take that risk. I've got a spare turn at the end of this because you only have to do it four times and you have five turns to do it. I'm going to take that risk and I'm going to do with my hybrids in my opponent's deployment zone. I might need to use my, my ones that deploy within three inches um, if I need to, um, but I've got my other unit as well. Uh, I can come in from strategic reserves as well. So between the, the two of them, one of those is going to do it turn two. Turn three, I'm going to score another four points for this, having already scored four from the previous two. So I'll be up to a total of eight in my third turn on this one. I'm going to do this with my, my neophytes that are deep striking in. Um, they're going to come in, there's 10 of them, they're going to come in somewhere. Hopefully by yeah, kind of turn turn three, the, your opponent will have will have moved around a bit and there'll be a bit more space because you'll have killed some stuff. There'll be a bit more space for this unit to tend to drop in. And remember, they can drop in six inches away, so there, there will be places where they can go in one of the other quarters. I'm going, this is going to be one of the quarters that on the far end of the board um, because they're the most dangerous ones. And then we're going to lose assets in those areas. So, that, so the neophytes in turn three dropping in, they're going to get get me the four points there. And then in my fourth turn, I'm going to do it with my nexos or someone like that because it's just it just has to be infantry. So whoever's available in my own kind of deployment zone area, I'm going to be doing it with them for the fourth one to maximise the twelve points on on R and D. So it gives me twelve points in R and D, fifteen points in second interrogation. 15 points in Brood Swarm. Obviously, the, that's the maximum I can get, but it's not the maximum possible. So I'm going to be three points short of the actual maximum 100 points in the game. So, um, in summary then, so I'm looking in this game to score 45 in the primary and then 15, 15, 12, plus the 10 points for uh, being battle ready. And that comes to a total of 97 points. Obviously, your opponent may have better secondaries that they can score. I don't feel like GSC are in a place to score 15-15-15 on the secondaries. I think this, there is some argument for a list that can do the ambush secondary, um, but I just think it's too there's too many conditions there. You're relying too much on shooting, I think. Um, so you get one point if you kill something with a crossfire marker, two points if you kill something from ambush or underground and two points if you kill something that was exposed which does play into our strengths but you're gonna i think you you're gonna have to be really on it to to with the shooting output and the 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 deep striking output definitely you can, you can deep strike in and make something exposed and shoot it if you're going to have a unit you know units of 20 man neophyte blobs uh, jumping in with four seismic cannons or mining lasers 
Um, okay, yeah, there's definitely an argument there that you can do ambush. With my list, I don't think I can do that. I don't have enough shooting for that. But you could potentially score, I think it's maximum four per turn. So you'd need to max out the first three turns, which I think would be very hard. And then, so that'd be, what well, you're on 12 there. And then you'd be scraping about in the last two turns to get a couple more points. You might be able to get to 14, I think, fairly confidently. But getting 15, I think, will be difficult. And I think you'd have to really make your list, you know, change your list to do this, really focus on this secondary. So anyway, yeah, so 97 points. Your opponent is going to try and score 100 points. So somewhere, somehow, you've got to get, you've got to take, you know, four points from them. And I think the place to do this is going to be in the primary. You, you can't plan for your opponent's secondaries very, very easily because you don't know them until you get there. Um, so that's going to be in the execution stage. Um, but plan somehow to, to to take their home objective or to, just to make to, to knock off four points of their primary score throughout the game. Try and, like I say, try and take their home objective. If you can get them down to scoring a zero in one turn, that's probably going to do it. Otherwise, you need to stop them from doing the tertiary as well. Um, so you're going to be on the day, you're going to have to do some, a bit of, you know, when you're when you're playing a, a bit, have a bit of a judgment about when and where you can stop them scoring four points. So if you do that, if you stop them scoring those four points, so they can only max forty-one on their primary, it doesn't matter what they do in the secondaries; they can only score ninety-six points. If you score your ninety-seven and everything goes to plan, you've won. Now that's all well and good at this point. This is this is the expectation stage. This is what I want to happen, and it most likely will not. But I'm going to have this in front of me whilst I'm playing my next game. And I'm going to go, okay, this is what I need to do. And if everything goes well, I'll come back and say, look, this is what I tried. I didn't quite make the 97 for whatever reason. I need to change my list a bit. Or I'm going to come back and say, yeah, it's good, 97, easy. The bit I didn't do was, you know, I couldn't knock off the primary. Okay, I need to adjust my list from there. So, yeah, that's the that's the planning stage. So ex execution, this is not as much to say on this because... You've just got to play. You've got to have your expectation table in front of you, have your game plan, and try and do that. You keep referring every turn. When you, when you start your turn, in, a, in your command phase, make it a habit of going back to this and going, okay, this is what I need to do. I need to remember my secondaries. It's so easy to get sucked into what your opponent is doing, what threats they have on the board. A lot of those, you cannot control that a lot of the time. But you, the thing you can control is what you do and how you score your points. Getting into a fight is fun. I totally get that. And getting sucked into that, trying to kill that monster or stopping that, you know, impossible unit, you know, in, in, unkillable unit, trying to take down a Harridan or something daft. Um, but if you just have this in your command phase, just have a look at your, your table. I also would note down the things you need to do in your command phase as well. They're just prompts, just, just to remind you what you need to achieve in your turn because you cannot control your opponent's turn you can only control yours this is where you have your agency you need your plan you need to know what you need to do so that's all i'll say on expectation uh, on execute sorry um the only other thing is write down the scores you know have a expectation table and a reality table you know how, how the game went table um do that and then we can get onto the reflection stage which is I think it's going to be a really probably the most important stage because it's going to it's it's going to get the value out of this whole process and put it forward. So you've had your game. It's the next day. You've come back. You've got your two tables. You've got your expectation table. You've got your reality table. Now you need to compare those two tables, and 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 that will really tell a story about where where it went wrong or where you could have done better or where you went right. As I said earlier. You need to interrogate this. Look at your secondary choices. Look at the units that you've you've managed to hold with your you know to get your primary. What units have you used there? You know, look at your wins. Look at your losses. It's it's hard to say without without being able to look at the numbers you've got. It's hard for me to give you the exact advice you need. But this is this is kind of a self reflection process, and you need to 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 look at these two tables and figure out where you've gone wrong. This will give you some actual data, though. You're going to have the numbers in front of you. You're going to say, "Oh, look, turn two, I didn't score three points in this secondary and four points in that secondary. Why not? Why, what went wrong for me there? Highlight those points, make a note of them, and then 
and then you take that forward into your next list planning stage and went, oh, go, go look, oh, I didn't score four points on R&D. I didn't have a unit that could do that specifically. So now into my list, I will add in a unit with um, is it lining weight. So you can come in three inches away. This could be a neophyte unit. This could, I, I use a hybrid unit for this. I risk the roll on the six, uh, but it you know, could be a neophyte unit to guarantee that you are going to get um, those victory, those, yeah, those victory points from R&D. Um, and if you keep doing this process, you you will start to s- score more consistently. Your 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 list will come out, and it'll be tooled up for scoring points rather than just winning a scrap, because that that's actually what's going to win you at the end of the day. You could end up with nothing left on the board, but if you've scored your ninety seven points or hundred points, and your opponent's only scored ninety but still got most of the models left, you've won. You can walk away and go, yeah, I won that game because it's not about the fight; it's about the points. Which obviously this is this is for match play. Some games you just want to have fun and go and smash things, and by all means go and do that. I did that last week as uh, after my my tournament, I wanted to kind of cool off and just have a um, a, a chill game. I, I did that. I got smashed, but I had fun, and that that's the the main part of this game is to have fun. So I'm going to leave it at that really. Um, so I've got, you've seen my, how I go through this process. You've seen the points I expect to score and I'll report back in my next video um, with my, the reality. I'm going to show you those scores that I got and then I'll, I'll go through what went wrong and, and what I'm going to change to try and achieve those points the next time. So yeah, that's it for today. Um, please do give me any feedback you like. Um, I hope you like this. I hope it's useful. Please do let me know. Um, please do like, share, and subscribe. I really appreciate everyone that's subscribed so far. The numbers growing all the time. It's it's wonderful to see. It really gives me uh, the 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 encouragement I need to to keep going on this. And I'm I'm hoping I'm going to give you some value. Uh, but please do reach out. I, I enjoy uh, the comments that I get. Um, I like to respond, and any messages are appreciated. So the last thing to say is have a good game next time you play. Goodbye. Okay, so I lied. This isn't the end of the video. Um, so. There's something I wanted to touch on before I figure this is the place, best place for it um, to save me a job in editing and to it'll be a pain in re-recording stuff. Uh, I'll put it in at the end here. So yesterday, um, some FAQs were released um, and there were updates that are really important, particularly for GSC. Uh, we didn't get, it didn't seem to, like there were big changes, but they are important changes. Um, and there are changes to the, kind of the core rules as well. So the genius of the cult, one of the ones I want to bring your attention to is the, um, there's a change for um, units in transports, still getting the benefit of crossfire and exposed. So I think this could open up uh, a build of um, Goliaths with neophytes in, with, um, you know, all the industrial weapons you can, you can get in there, the big weapons you can get in there. Um, I think that that is somewhere um, that we could look to to build a list. Uh, and we're going to have to ponder it through. Uh, I'm planning in a few weeks to try and come up with a few different lists, um, different list archetypes for people to, to, to try out, see if that helps people. Um, and again, go through my my scoring, how I expect to score, etc. cetera, with, the, with each list. Um, so yeah, look forward to that. And the other one of the other big changes is the... Um, charging into obscuring terrain so it's a bit i don't think i think there's ways to game this now i think the 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 fix they've put in in brief is rather than there being one inch um engagement range you go up to two inches so this is to prevent people from being 1.1 inches away from a wall so that you cannot charge and be on the other side of the wall if that makes sense so your opponent's inside the wall 1.1 1.1 inches away, it's over an inch, so you can't get them charge them in combat. Um, however, this is now two inches, so they now to be need to be 2.1 inches away, which is fine. It's still doable. It's going to make people less able to hide in ruins from combat, which is which is a nice change. It also means that um, if you say you've got a, a 32 mil base like acolytes, before if they were 1.1 inches away, the acolyte couldn't actually fit between the wall and the unit because the um because the base is 32 mil which is obviously more than an inch so you, your opponent could stop you from being able to actually physically get your models there now they won't be able to now um you'll have two inches to play with so you can get your all your acolytes in and then the other thing that is interesting is that so 
so your GSC units are going to drop in eight inches away. And now to get into engagement range, you only need to be two inches away from the from in obscuring terrain. So if someone if a unit is in, in obscuring terrain, then actually now you get an extra inch because you you need to be eight inches away from the model, but only when you drop in, but then only two inches away, less than two inches away when you um, are in combat. So effectively, you only actually need now a seven inch charge into obscuring terrain to get them in, to, to have a successful charge. And you can combo this with a, an Acolyte Icon Ward to give you plus one to charge if you if you um, move him right and do his action before you drop them in. Um, you can use things like Alien Majesty to give him a nine inch aura as well. Um, which could be an interesting combo to do. It's something I've been thinking about. Um, but yeah, you can you can make it so it's a, a six inch charge from Deep Strike, which is, is is so much more likely to go off, particularly with the ability to re-roll that. Um, so you can see some much more consistent charges into obscuring terrain. Um, and, and conversely, do be careful on on the defensive side of of this. Um, don't you don't want to fall foul of this either. Um, so yeah better charge or easier charges into obscuring terrain. There are some a couple of little changes, but I think they're the two main ones, the shooting in, in transports and the um, the charging and maybe needing you know an inch less on a charge. So I will leave it there. I've talked for, I don't know, 40 minutes at this point. Um, thanks for everyone who's, who stayed through, <laughs> through this extra bit as well. Um, and yeah, please do like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.